The criterion of the forces of evil is to send as many people as possible to hell. The most advanced technology on the planet that we have access to is prayers to God, specifically prayers to Jesus. The Chinese Communist Party, which rules over China, and China is so big, right? Execute people who want to worship and believe in Jesus. You can't do it under penalty of death. So people in China who want to be Christian do it at their own peril. You know, unless they leave and never come back. And then if they go to a place where it's allowed to, they can pray to Jesus. Um, because that's God. Nobody else. Look at how the other religions are. You're allowed to believe in them and they're even defended. They defend the Muslims. They defend the Buddhists. But it's open season on Jesus year round. Yes, that's who God is. And the forces of evil, whatever you want to call them. Let's just say evil incarnate or evil incorporeal. Evil, the most important thing, the only thing that evil has to do, its only goal is to send as many people as possible to hell. All the plans of the wealthy elite whose fortune shape the fates of nations have one consistent theme in all their books on globalization. It's always been the same. We have to divorce people from God. They don't want you to pray and utilize the most advanced technology on the planet. A direct line to the Creator where you can pray against evil. Because every time you pray to Jesus, you are praying against their plans to send you to hell. So pray and keep praying and never stop. Here's a prayer for you. Pray that their plans be destroyed. Whatever it is, pick an evil world plan or just say the plan to have the world under one global government. You can see who the evil people are and you know their names. God knows better than you all the evil of the world. Pray against evil. You have access to that technology and they just don't want you to call him. They don't want you to talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. The Chinese Communist Party doesn't allow Christianity. Christianity Christianity under penalty of death, that's how it is in China. They catch you worshiping Jesus, they kill you. You can have Buddha, but you can't have Jesus. Doesn't that tell you something? Yeah, pray to God for help. Pray to Jesus for help. Because missionaries go to China and risk their lives and get executed if they catch them. And Chinese people are willing to die just so that they can learn about Jesus because it's not allowed. You can't just go online in China and find out about Jesus. You can only get what the party says and the party says that there is no God and that you have to obey them under penalty of death and they don't allow, because communism doesn't allow, you to pray for God. It is the most important thing the only thing that evil has any, it's the only goal. They just want to send you to hell. It's the only goal. They want as many people as possible to go to hell. They don't want you to pray because every prayer to Jesus is a prayer against their evil plans. So this is what you do. You pray to Jesus for their plans to be destroyed and you make sure that's part of your prayer every day. You have a bad thought, you hear something that, uh, on the news or at work or wherever, pray immediately. Say, please, Lord, make that plan fail. Whatever you hear, see, don't like, ha or have, have foisted upon you, you pray against evil. You say, please, Lord, make their plans fail. Whatever it is, plans for globalization, plans that the Chinese government has for America or for the rest of the world. You pray against it. You pray to Jesus because... That's what the wealthy elite whose fortune shaped the fates of nations don't want you to do. They don't want you to even know how to pray to God. They don't want you to allow it. People that don't want you to pray to God are Bill Gates. He wants people to not pray to God and he said it. So you want to know who the bad guys are. Anybody who says don't pray to Jesus and never has a change of heart. And you know, like if somebody comes around to Jesus, as long as they're not talking about Francis and the Roman Catholics, 
Oh good, maybe that's a redemption arc. But they don't want you to have one. They want every single person that they can possibly get to go to hell. Because it's forever. They just don't want you in heaven. And they don't even care who you are. They just want to send everybody to hell. So pray against them. Every day, every night, when you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed, pray against their evil plans and use your own words and get creative. Please, Lord, destroy their evil plans. Put tiny cracks and tears in their plans every day in every way. Everything that they do, make it fail. Make the, I pray to you, Lord, that the evildoers be exposed, that they be thwarted, that they be caught in their own nets and traps and snares while we escape safely, always and every time. And be persistent. God can appreciate, He does, persistence in prayer, especially if it's something that's in accordance with His will. And it's always going to be in accordance with His will that you pray for the salvation of your soul and the souls of everyone possible because whatever the devil wants, you just don't want him to have it. That's your mindset now. Whatever the devil wants, you say, what would Jesus do? And what would the devil do? What would evil do? And you say, well, whatever evil wants, I just don't want him to have it. It's a great motivator for you in your life to look at things that aren't working and say, is that one of the ways that the devil got me? Is it hurting people? Is it hurting myself? Well, I have to stop because I just don't want the devil to have anything that he wants. I just don't want evil to have anything that it wants. And there's only one thing that evil wants. It wants you to go to hell. This is all evil and people, wealthy elite whose fortune shaped the fates of nations. Books on globalization, they all say the same thing. It's the most important thing. They don't want you to pray to God because every prayer to God, to Jesus, is a prayer against their evil plot is a prayer against them. So you pray for their plans to fail and never stop unto death. Always pray for their plans to fail. You can do this every day, every time you pray. You can do it before you get out of bed. You can do it right before you go to bed. You can do it in bed. Pray to God. Say, please, Lord, I pray that their plans fail. Wherever you live, I don't know. Uh, you pray, you know, for yourself, for your township, your country, wherever you live, for the city you live in. And you pray that their plans fail. And you pray to Jesus and you ask Him for help. And you be consistent and persistent. And you can also do it anytime you think about it. You see some kind of horrible thing on the computer or on your phone, pray against it. Say, please, Jesus, destroy this evil plan, this evil plot, whatever it is you've seen. Please help the people that need help and thwart the evildoers. Let them be exposed. Let them be shamed and humiliated for all the world to see. And if it can save any of their souls, then good. Because the devil wanted those people to go to hell and he got them, right? He made them evil. So, you pray for their salvation. God commanded this. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. And we're also told, you know, pray for our leaders. It's not one of the Ten Commandments, but that would probably fit in with love your neighbor as yourself. What would Jesus do? Well, He wants us in heaven with Him. He loves us, even when we turn away from Him. He's faithful to the end. He keeps giving us chances to set ourselves right with Him. This is what repentance is. You go to God, you realize what you've done is wrong, and know that it hurts Him that you did the wrong thing, and you tell Him you're sorry. And you mean it, probably with tears. Maybe you're not going to cry about everything that you know that you've done that grieves God. But some of them, probably, you know, you surely will. There's at least a couple of ripe ones that we each have, which is really bad things, horrible sins. Maybe keep doing the horrible sins again. Um, yes, God doesn't want to see your tears and crying, but it's one way that you both know. And He knows before you even prayed, before you even cried. It's the way that you know that you mean it. That's why I say when you got tears, it means you're broken. God says, give me a broken man, somebody who's not so stubborn. That's somebody I can work with. So you pray to God for their plans to fail. And you confess to Him your sins. You go into your secret place and pray in secret where God who knows all secrets hears you. And you access the most advanced technology on the planet that the fallen angels and the dead Nephilim and unclean spirits don't have. They don't have recourse to aid from God. And God is power. The one true power. Christians have power over demons. 
Christians cast them out, all right? So, you can pray for the destruction of the Chinese Communist Party. Please, Lord, make them fail, tear them apart. You can pray for, you know, don't get yourself into trouble by praying for people's deaths. You pray for salvation. Lord, if you can get through to them, get through to them, but stop them. Let the evildoers be exposed so that all the world can see, so that everyone knows that evil has been done and so that it's thwarted. You pray for their plans to fail. And if anyone can be saved, then you pray for the salvation of those who can be saved. And those who can't be saved, maybe you can pray what's in the Psalter attributed to Prophet King David. Open the pit, Lord. Send them down alive into hell. Food for the jackals. Stuff like that. Look at the Psalter and see what Prophet King David prays when he pours his heart out. It's in the Bible. And if you're Chinese, you can't have it. Go think other countries in the world where under penalty of death you can you believe in Jesus. Uh, you can go to India and believe in Jesus, I think. But that's a country full of lots of people and those people are full of lots of demons. They're like a hound with mange, lousy with fleas, demons in India, right? It's part of their religion. They worship and venerate demons and then they exported that to the whole rest of the world. And now people do yoga getting into the postures of demons so demons can inhabit the person. Opening an energetic circuit to be a conduit for blurring the boundaries between corporeal and incorporeal. Getting into a yoga pose and, and being possessed of a demon and ha being, having the spirit of a demon possess you. That's what yoga is. And Christians can't do yoga. They do, but it's not allowed. No yoga and prayers to God against evil. You can also pray like this. Please, Lord, I don't hate the people. I hate the programs. Make these Muslims Christian. Make these Jews Christian. Make these Buddhists Christian. Make these Taoists, Taoists, make them Christians. Make these godless heathens Christians. May, bring these Satanists back to you. Because you can pray these things and you can do it Whenever you can pray, and some people pray a lot, maybe turn the TV off and pray for the world. Pray for your country. Pray for other countries in peril. And pray that the plans of the evildoers worldwide fail. You can do an encompassing plan for the whole world and say, please, Lord, make all their evil plans fail. And be persistent and do it every day. And, you know, lots of people are doing this. Lots of people are, because they know how, they have access, they know that they have access to the technology, the most advanced technology there is, to call the creator and maker of all things and ask for help and protection from evil to be kept safe and hid beneath his wing for you and all your loved ones. You can pray to God for help. You can pray to God for protection. And you can do you know, offensive prayers. Please, Lord, make their plans fail. And if there's anybody there amongst them that can be saved, maybe they'll have a holy martyrdom. Maybe they'll have a change of heart. And we can live in some peace and dignity for a change. How about it? You can pray for this. You can pray against evil. You can pray for people that hate you. You can pray for people that persecute you and want to kill you. You can pray that they can be saved. You know why you want to do this? Because evil has only one goal, to send as many people as possible to hell. So whatever it is that evil wants, you just don't let them have it. You pray against it. You pray against evil. You're for peace. You're for his kingdom to come. But your prayers can be prayers to destroy their plans. So put the word out there to as many people as possible because God hears in collective prayer is corporate prayer. It's almost like Sunday on church. Yes, we're all separated, but everybody praying for the same thing day in, day out. There's momentum that's energy harvesting too, but instead of your energy being dispersed and going to evil forces, um, it's going to God. The energy is harvested too. It's collective prayer, prayers for the same things. And it's in accordance with His will that evil be thwarted. So you pray that their evil plans fail. You can even pray for the dissolution of the CCP, the evils of Israel, whatever you want to pray for. Uh, you can pray for them. 
and pray for any soul that can be saved, you do it. Because whatever the devil wants, we just don't want him to have a thing. Whatever evil wants, we want everything taken away from evil. We want evil stripped and robbed of any authority or power. That they, and they always use fear to do it. Pray against them. Pray that their plans fail and all the evildoers that knowingly work with them. You can do prayers against deep state government. You can do, w w w you're limited only by what you understand about the world. That's where I think a lot of disappointments in a Christian or even Orthodox Christian clergy come from, is that these guys just aren't online. They, they don't understand, like, <laughs> Their prayers have become uncreative, powerful nonetheless. I don't doubt the powerful prayers of clergy, ministers, pastors, whatever denomination. Just so long as you're true soldiers of Christ in His ranks, prayer is a weapon. Weaponized prayer. This is not out of accord with His will. You make your prayer, if it's a, it's of especially if it's a prayer that's in accordance with His will, He'll pick it up and carry it out because He, because this is power. The one true power is God. He is power. He is power. Pray to Jesus for help. Pray to Jesus against evil. Please, Lord, it's as simple as what I'm just telling you. It's like this. Please, Lord, make their plans fail. And if you want to get more specific, you pick something and you say, please, Lord, here, destroy this evil plot, this evil plan. You can go through as many of them as you can find. God appreciates prayers. You're in communion with Him. You're communing to God. And you're asking Him for help. And it's not just selfish help for yourself. It's help for other people. Hezekiah's prayer, modified. Uh, although I think this is included in it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me and save me a sinner. That's for you and for everybody else around you because if you can get it together, you will help other people. That's Christian. That's what God wants of us. But here's how to make it better, and I'll leave you with this. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us and save us sinners. He likes that. He likes when you pray that. And also, I'm telling you, they just want as many people as possible to go to hell. So you don't let them. Whatever the devil wants, you take it away from them and you think like that. What would Jesus do? You do that. What's evil? I want to... Nah, I'm not letting evil have that. I'm not letting the devil have that. I don't want him to have that one single person, that one single soul. And you pray like that. So you pray for people that aren't Christians to be Christians because you don't hate people. You, you want to be like Jesus. You want to love people. You want to love them like He does, which is impossible. We'll never catch up to how much He loves us. But it's a worthy aim to pray like that. And be careful what you ask for because you might get it. If you can see how much He loves us, then you might get some idea, which is a thing that maybe you might want to have, is to understand how much it grieves Him and hurts Him when He loses a soul to hell because He wanted that person with Him. They want us to fight each other. They want us to kill each other. They want us to be divided. So you keep praying and don't ever stop. You pray against the evil. You pray that their plans be destroyed. Because every prayer against, every prayer to Jesus is a prayer against evil. Learn how to pray, read the Psalter, read the Bible, and never stop because China is a huge country and India is a huge country. Don't they have the highest populations of people in the world still to this day? Yeah, and they kill Christians. And in China, you can't even, they don't even want you to know about Jesus. And all the plans for globalization have the same thing. The wealthy elite whose fortunes shape the fates of nations want to take your ability to pray to God and remove it. They only want you to have counterfeits so that it hurts God and you go to hell because that is the one single singular aim of evil is to send as many people as possible to hell because that's where evil goes forever you go to heaven forever where everything that doesn't make sense down here in this fallen world will make sense forever and you will be perfected and there's no more sorrow or longing or suffering or you can go to hell I don't want you in hell and I don't even know you. I don't want anyone in hell. I want to take everything away 
from the devil and his minions and everything that evil wants. Let's just call it what it is. Everything that the forces of evil that evil wants, I just don't want them to have anything. I want them to go to hell forever. And let's keep in mind that we get to judge those fallen angels. Why need they be judged? I just say send them to hell. Well, we have to wait till eternity. We have to be willing to lay down our lives for what's right and we're going to get the opportunity. You keep praying no matter what because right now there are people who aren't even allowed to know how to pray to Jesus because if they do, it's under penalty of death. You're watching my video? You can pray. Turn the computer off. Go inside a closet or something wherever you keep your clothes and pray to Jesus against their evil plans. Please, Lord, make their plans fail worldwide. Let the evildoers be exposed for all to see. And if anyone can be saved, I pray for their salvation so that, just so that the devil can't have them. Just so the devil can't have them. Whatever he wants, I want to take it away from him. He's evil. And all he wants to do is make sure everybody goes to hell because he has to go there. And so does everybody that's with him. They've gone too far and God said, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to hear your prayers. Because they want you to go to hell. And whatever the devil wants, you just don't want him to have it. You want what Jesus wants for you. And he wants you in heaven with him. Why? So that everything will make sense to you like it just doesn't down here. Why the horror? Why all the horrible things? Maybe nobody gave you an answer that was satisfactory. Well, pray against evil. And when you get to heaven, when we get to heaven, it'll all make sense. It'll make perfect sense. Just like it makes perfect sense when God has to send people to hell and they know why they're going there. You want what Jesus wants. He loves us and he wants us in heaven with him. Everybody, everybody he can get. And you can help him by praying to God for the salvation of souls, to live in peace and dignity and for the plans of all the evil doers to be thwarted and destroyed for the demons the fallen angels to be crippled and broken and unable to do harm to be unable to work together with each other get creative with your prayers um, increase your faith and never stop praying to Jesus unto death never stop praying Morning, noon, night, whenever you have time, lunch, pray it. Just is this his holy temple you are. You can be at work and say, you know, just you see something bad? You see a bad news story? Please, Jesus, save those people. Let the evil be exposed. You know what's really going on. They lie about the truth of it in the news. Whatever it is you see, you can pray against evil. Please, Lord, I pray for this plot to be destroyed and the evildoers to be exposed. If anyone can be saved, then to be saved. And sometimes what it takes to save people is that they have to be willing to lay down their lives and they become holy martyrs. A lot of evil people have realized eternity in hell is not what they want, so they repent. So you have to be willing to give people a way up and a way out. And you also know as well as I do, and God knows better than both of us, that some people are going to hell and they just won't have it any other way. Um, and there are beings, you know, forces of darkness, incorporeal, fallen angels, dead Nephilims, unclean spirits, all these things. They're going to hell. And they have no recourse to the aid of anyone. They just help each other to do the one thing that they have. The only one goal is we're all going to hell. And they want to drag as many people as possible to hell. So you don't let them. Because you have that ability. As a Christian, you have authority over demons. You have authority over evil. And we're going to start having to use it. We have to start using this technology given to us by the maker of all things. And it starts with prayer. Persistent and consistent and daily prayer. Prayers to Jesus. Because before we didn't know his name and now we know it. So use it. And here's the phone number for God. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, our debts that we owe that we cannot pay, as we forgive those who are indebted to us, who sin against us, who cannot repay us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the age that has never an end. Amen. That's where you're going to be. In heaven. Forever. It's heaven. You want to go to heaven or you want to go to hell? Do you want to have this place make sense? It'll make sense to you in hell, but there's no joy. It's only sorrow. It's only suffering. And in heaven, there's none of these things. Pray to God for the salvation of souls, not just your own but for everybody that we can possibly get up there because there's only one goal of evil, again, to overstate it. They just want you to go to hell and we won't let them. We're, getting, we're throwing people at God. Amen.